This is your 2021 Kia Sedona minivan, last year of this generation before the all new one shows up. Having said that, there's still a lot to like about the 2021 Sedona. Let's take a quick look through it. It's my second time around having it, so pretty clean looking. I call this Kia's classic clean look because it's just so simple yet so effective. Uh, nice big grill, and not a big fan of the halogen turn signals front and rear, but you get LED lights in the directionally adaptive. So you turn the steering wheel and then the lenses go left or right, giving you a better look around corners. And you have your fog lights down there and a bit of a blend of the uh, thunder gray, which is what this paint color is and some gloss black and the silver there. So not a bad look up front overall, not quite as menacing as the new one's going to be, but still, you know, nice, clean and classic. Let's take a quick look at the side view. So on this top trim SX Tech, you do get the chrome door handles as opposed to the body colored ones. And it's it's a minivan. You can't really do too much with the shape of it. Um, but, uh, wait and see what the 2022 uh, Sedona looks like. Uh, the rims, yeah, they're okay. Uh, simplicity for me is where it's at. And there's the big rail, which the sliding door uses. And to me, that's where minivans beat any kind of SUV. You can't beat the functionality of a sliding door. You just can't. Anyways, a uh, quick look around the rear. Like I said, halogen turn signals, nah, not a big fan. Uh, the cool thing here is Kia's got this great system. Um, it's not quite a stow and go as uh, our friends at Chrysler have, but the seats do collapse in uh, to these pretty big uh, wells down here. So I put the passenger side one down for you uh, to take a look, and this is how big the well is. So I think I can do it with one hand. So basically it's pretty easily numbered, right? There's one, there's two, so number one, lift, pull, and it kind of just slides into place. And if you ever forget, um, there are some <laughs> instructions right there. Uh, so definite perk, absolute perk right there. So really, really good, Get uh, gets you a ton of space. and. Here's a quick look and these three seats move. A middle seat can actually come out to give you even more space. You lose a seat um, or a person to take, but hey, that's okay. Let's take a look inside using the remote control. You push the button on the left and that opens up the driver's side sliding door. So this is again, top trim SX tech. So it does get you leather seats and they're pretty nice. They have that nice red, uh, sorry, white piping and the uh, red stitching. Gives it a nice classy look. And the cool thing here is the seats don't always do the boring thing that everyone else's does, which is just have the seat back go down. What you do is you go back here and there's a little lock and unlock symbol. So you're gonna go to unlock and lift it up. And as it goes, you can see the seat back itself, uh, not quite flattens up, but it definitely moves up quite a bit. And the seat back just goes, it's getting raised. So that A gets you a lot of space to get into the third row, providing you know, those seats were up or if you've got to get in there for whatever reason. Plus you do that with this seat, plus the outside one, you toss this seat and you can still get a lot more cargo in here um, with the seats up as opposed to the seats kind of being back there. So just that extra bit of versatility um, that makes it that much more worth it. Uh, as I mentioned, there is the manual sunshade. Sorry for showing you my neighbor's backyard, but there's a little tab at the top of your screen um, and a nice fancy handle. So I'm gonna put this seat back and show you the middle console. So we're gonna go back to the unlock position, which is that. I'm gonna try and shoulder this back because I only have one hand to work with. All right, so there we go, back to the way it was. Uh, quick peek back here, you do get heated rear seats for your outboard passengers, USB. Um, oh, come on, keep slipping. Anyway, so a little outlet there and a little bit of storage right in there. All right, uh, that's gonna wrap that up. Uh, two ways to close the door. You can either yank on this or you can push the button. Uh, I'm gonna push the button. And now you can see that it closes. Take a quick spin up front. Again, this is the end of this generation, so we won't spend too much time in here. Uh, I'll show you the opening graphic as I get myself out of the sun. Hopefully, come on, out of the way, sun. There we go. All right, that's it. Got the uh, typical Kia system check thing. Looks really, really nice. Big analog dials, nice, cool shape for the uh, digital screen in the middle. You can see it's kind of arced off of the sides and kind of flourishes inward. So uh, I like the attention to detail there as far as, you know, small things. They, they could have just gone for a straight rectangle, but good job on Kia for uh, doing that. You get some controls over here, no blanks, full marks there. Nice and easy to find gas door release. Here's an ERC for me. There's an opening here, so this is now a useless storage bin uh, or potential storage bin that um, if they just close that up, 
could have been functional. Not really a big fan of that. Uh, a bit of an irk for me. This is an eight inch screen. The other three trims get seven inch screens. And to save money, I think they should have just put an eight inch screen in for everybody. Just you know, a little weird. But on the plus side, uh, Kia's, Kia's infotainment system, probably one of the best in the industry as far as simplicity, yeah, really, really easy to use. Uh, it's got like an all menus and you just slide over and everything's where you need it to be. And Kia does a great job of that. Uh, you get some hard touch buttons, your favorite button up here and just to the left of the seek and the track button, uh, small little dials for volume and your, um, and your tuning, but hey, that's uh, no big deal. Um, climate, it's so easy. It's, it's, so, it's so Kia. I'm gonna just pull this camera back a touch and just give you a look as we, how can we hide that sun? There we go. <laughs> So it's just, it's so simple and easy to, easy to maneuver through. And I'm a big fan of that. I've seen some of the pictures for the 2022 model even easier. So, you know, it, Kia does that right. I'm just gonna put this in drive for a sec to show you that that's where your wireless charging is and that's where a USB and an auxiliary port is. So this is kind of like your little power station. We'll put the nice and easy to use, um, no complications, just push in, pull straight down or up. Uh, gear lever, I've always liked that about Kia, very, very simple. A um, couple of cup holders, uh, one blank here. No, give me something, give me anything. Anyways, um, standard stuff here. Uh, I wanna show you a perk. You get a cooled um, glove box. So there's your little uh, indicator there, just to the left of your screen as to whether you, oops, whether you want uh, the cool air to pop in or not. Uh, gimmicky, I don't know how many people will actually use it, but it's an option, right? All right, I'm gonna open this up. A uh, bunch of storage. This is a spot for your sunglasses, as it clearly says there. And if you're wondering why, that's for your sunglasses. And you're like, Jay, why, why can't we just use this? That is your conversation mirror. So basically, that can we show that? Yeah, basically that gives you a look at everything in the back of the vehicle. So pretty cool move there. Well done, Kia. Uh, and there's your opening and closing of the uh, side door panels. Um, Everything's just nicely laid out. And I, I, I like that it's up here. Um, it just, it's something different. I think if they dumped it somewhere down here, it'd be a little too cluttered. You know, a little too cluttered, at least for my liking. Uh, here's another perk. You kind of get that chauffeur-esque kind of thing um, for the driver. So if you, I don't know, you need this to be moved, but you can't reach over all the way. You just push this and that gets the seat back going and you push this and that gets the uh, seat bottom going. And let's say, I don't know, the person back here says, I want an extra six inches of leg space. Well, you can give it to them. Let's do the drive in the 2021 Kia Sedona. Same engine as the last few years. It's the 3.3 liter V6, giving you 276 horsepower and 248 pound-feet of torque. This is all run through Kia's eight-speed automatic transmission. On the road, this is a function-first vehicle, and it's a minivan, and it is not really anything sporty about a minivan because it's meant for hauling people and hauling stuff and being versatile and you're the person that people will call on moving day and on oh hey i gotta go to ikea for something or whatever it is that needs to be moved you are probably the one getting the call or whether it's your kids sports practice dancing practice band practice whatever it is with over 4,000 liters of cargo space with the second row folded up and the third row collapsed in. There's a, there, there's a lot of stuff being able to be done in, uh, in the Sedona. So very, very functional. It's not underpowered, not as powerful as I'd like it to be. You know, give me figures, at least on the torque side in the 300s, um, just a, a little bit more. The pickup's a little on the laggy side, and not the worst thing, but I would like a little more oomph to it. And it's been just me in the Sedona for the week, and you know, no other cargo, no other people. That whole COVID thing gets in the way, right? Um, and just I found the pickup to be a little lagging. Again, not dangerous by any means, but just a little bit more. Uh, let's talk fuel figures. So it is 12.7 liters per 100 kilometers on city streets. It's an even 10 on the highway. Your blended total comes out to 11.5. Not too bad. Again, consider the size of the vehicle. And most times there's going to be more than one person in it. I think, I think I'm the, the rare exception uh, to that for this test week. 
um, and it's an 80 liter fuel tank which runs on uh, on regular fuel. As this is the SX Tech, you get all of the safety features. It kind of says so on the name with the technology, uh, and you get the bending headlights and 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 and. I'll put a list of some of the highlights um, of what the SX Tech includes, and there's some cool standard features. You no know, heated seats, heated steering wheel. Uh, that little cool conversation mirror that is in place of where the sunglasses holder is. And there's not a lot on the base model, but nobody really buys base. So base price is what gets people in the door and their whole buyer's remorse thing. And oh, I wish I would have gotten XXXX with my car. So I don't know if it was me, a person who is very against buyer's remorse, I like to at least try and make the right decision the first time. I usually go top trim with uh, with my cars, um, and I think that's what potential Sedona owners should consider as well. With the introduction of the Telluride last year, another three-row vehicle from Kia, the real differentiator here, it's the sliding doors. And to me, I would pick a minivan over an SUV if I was living that lifestyle, if I had uh, if I had kids, if I had a wife, I had a bunch of things to put in here. You just can't beat the opening of the sliding door as far as getting things in and out. Even some of the best SUVs out there only open like 85, 86 degrees for the rear doors. With the sliding doors on the Sedona, and I guess any minivan out there, and any minivan out there, that sounded really strange. Yeah, sliding doors, absolute winner for me. SX Tech does come with an upgraded audio system which is nice and clear and big and boomy. And you can still hear the music in the rear seats. And did a little test where I sat in the very, very back seats, cranked the music up and could hear it just fine without any issues. Would I have liked a panoramic sunroof? Absolutely. Am I gonna be okay with just a regular rectangular one? Sure, not the end of the world. Um, the big panoramics are really geared more for your rear passengers to give them a little bit of light as opposed to just having the regular one here, which serves your driver and your front seat passenger. Kia definitely thinks there's a future in minivans for the brand or else they wouldn't have invested hundreds of millions of dollars in creating an all new one, which is due out fairly shortly. Uh, it, it's, it's a toss up for me. I love the functionality of the sliding doors of a minivan. The cool factor just isn't there, which is why we've lost so many of them. And Nissan had one and Hyundai had one and Volkswagen had one and they've all kind of gone away being replaced by the SUV, CUV crossover, whatever it is you want to call them. So it'll be interesting to see just how well the Kia Sedona does. And it's up against kind of the kings and queens of minivans, right? Like Chrysler's been putting out minivans since forever. They were, they were the first ones to do it. The Odyssey and the Sienna are just pillars as far as popularity and functionality goes. So I hope Kia does a really, really strong job in offering up their 2022 model. So that's gonna wrap it up for the 2021 Sedona. If you've got any questions on the vehicle, let me know. I'll do my best to get you answers as soon as possible. Put that thing in park. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be back sooner than later. Oh, I'll be healthy, be well, be safe. I'll say it twice. Be healthy, be well, be safe, and I'll be back sooner than later with my next car review.